everybody, welcome back. Today I got a nice affordable option for a power station. This is the SnugMax 350 watt portable power station. All right, everybody, welcome back. So you might remember last week I showed you a little more expensive power station. This is definitely an affordable um, option. You guys may remember a while back I did the SnugMax 200 watt power station. This is what it looks like here. This is a very affordable option. But again, it's only 220 watts. That's 350 watts and has a few more plugs, bells, and whistles on it. So we're going to take a look at this today. And I have found that during any kind of emergency, usually the first thing you notice is the lack of power. And this will be able to let you get through that very, very simply. Now, it's not going to power your whole house, but it is going to power a whole lot of things that you might need in an emergency when the power's out. So the first thing we're going to do is unbox it and show you what's inside. All right, so really simple. Obviously, I've opened this already and tested it, but really simple. I will show you how it comes packed. There we go. And it is very well packed. You'll notice on the side here, there is a box. Let me show you that on camera. A little cardboard box on top there. That's going to contain all your power um, connectors that you'll need. Let me move this back. And I'll show you what you get inside here. All right, so you're going to get your warranty card and your instructions. Please make sure to read the instructions beforehand. They're very simple. I mean, there's nothing in here that's overly complicated. I just always tell people to do that because I'm bad about it and I forget to do it. And sometimes there's those little stupid things that you don't see and it's like, oh, no wonder that wasn't working that way. So make sure you read through them. It pretty much works like any other power station you can imagine, but it's always good to read through them. You're going to get your wall plug here. And this will plug into this little guy here, this little power supply. So basically, they'll go together like that. And we'll show you how it charges um, in the house. And then we're going to take it outside and use it. And you have your car adapter. Now, as any of these go, generally, when you're charging these, please make sure your vehicle is running. You don't want to charge this while your vehicle sits. You'll kill your vehicle's battery. It takes a lot to charge these up, so you want to make sure... You're not going to kill your car's battery while you go shopping for two hours and leave this charging in your receptacle. All right, let's get inside. Move this out of the way here. Here is the unit itself. And I will move that box off. There we go. Move that box out of the way here. And there you go. So there's the unit itself. Now it will come about half charged. Of course, obviously, I topped this off for the video. But uh, you'll hit your power button right there, and there you go. There's your display. Really nice display. One of the things I like about this is it shows you how much energy you're using and how much you're putting in when you're charging it. So to charge it, it's fairly simple. I'm going to take this here. We're going to plug it into my power strip back here. And hopefully that will reach. Yep, that will reach. And there you go. You've got input, and it's showing you your input at 58.2 watts, and that's what's going in right now. There you go, and you'll see it charging up like that. I've only used this for a very short time, so I just wanted to show you um, it topping off. I wanted to make sure I had a little room in there so I didn't just plug it in and it was full. So, very, very cool way to charge it at home. If you don't have a solar panel, we will be demonstrating it with the SnugMax solar panel that is sold separately. It's a 60-watt panel, but um, if you don't have it at home, you know, again, if you're an apartment person who doesn't have a lot of room in your place and you don't have a place to stick a solar panel outside, you can always put a solar panel in a sun-facing window, but you can always just keep it plugged in and topped off and unplug it when it's topped off. So let's get into the uh, features of this whole thing right here. I'm going to let that charge while we're talking about it. First off, the power supply is an AC 100 to 240 volt pure sine wave inverter. Again, these are pure sine wave inverters. Now the benefits of a pure sine wave inverter as opposed to a modified sine wave. Items like computers have less issues. Appliances run a lot cooler and more efficiently. Radio and telco gear have less noise and hum. So if you want to say run a ham radio power supply off this, be perfectly fine to do. Motors also will run at their correct speed and with less heat. It is a more efficient inverter. So that's the benefits of that. Your charging voltage will be anywhere from DC 13 volts to 25 volts. Power input DC is 19 volts at 3.42 amps. Your power output, 12 volts, 8 amps is your max. 
or 20 volts at 24 volts at 3 amps. And your total capacity on this unit is 80,000 milliamp hours or 296 watt hours. That's how many watts are in there per hour you can use. Now, it features a 296 watt power capacity. So this is able to provide stable power to, say, smartphones, tablets, laptops, CPAP machines during power outages, any kind of emergency gear that you need plugged in, um, oxygen generators for folks that are on oxygen, uh, any kind of stuff like that. This will work very, very well. So let me zoom in here and I'll show you what's on the face. All right, so first off, you're going to notice you've got your AC, DC, USB, and Type-C outlets. You've got two AC outlets right here. And if we were to turn those on, you'd hit the AC button right there. You've got two DC outlets. One is a 12-volt 8-amp, and the other is a 12-volt 3-amp, or 24-volt 3-amp. I'm sorry. So there's your 12-volt, and there's your 24-volt 3-amps, and your 12-volt and 8-amps right there. You've got two USB ports here, a 5-volt 2.4-amps right there and there. And, of course, you have your Type-C and your cigarette lighter adapter plug up here. Now, as I showed you before, this is your input, and that's where your car charger will go in as well. And it makes it suitable for charging a ton of different devices, so that's really, really cool. Now, this can be charged, like I showed you, plugged into the wall. You can do it via the car charger, or you can use the solar panel, which we'll get into in a second. So let me give you one last little bit of information, and then we're going to take it outside and test it out and see what it can do. So some of the features and the reliability features of this is it has the pure sine wave inverter, which we've explained before. That is awesome. These little units having a pure sine wave inverter is really, really cool for the price point that we're talking about here. The battery management system protects you against overcurrent, over voltage, any kind of over temperature so that devices will prolong their battery life using it. And it's got professional MPP technology, which allows faster recharging times that maximizes your solar input. We showed you what's inside, so let's take it outside right now and see how much stuff we can power with it. I'm going to be setting it up on my camp table out front usually where I do my outdoor videos, and we're going to test it out. That way there's no power around, so you know this is doing it all. Oh, and by the way, also too, this does have a charger on top here for your cell phones to charge wirelessly. You can just put your phone up there, and it will charge. Very nice carry handles as well. So, let's take it outside and try it out. All right, so we got it outside here, and we are all set. We're going to plug everything in. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is turn it on. I don't know if you can see it. It's very bright out here. But we will zoom in once everything's running. I'm going to plug this in here. This is my Redibus walkie-talkies. So they're charging. The only way you can really tell is by looking at that little blinking thing up there. But anyway, that's what's charging. So I'm doing about one watt on that. We're going to plug in our Odin Mini and charge that up. Okay, so now we're at 1.6 watts. That's charging and that's charging. Now we're going to try something interesting. If you notice in the back here, I have what looks like a little refrigerator. Um, I reviewed this on my channel, I believe, last year or at the beginning of this year sometime. And what this is, is a cooler or heater. So you can keep things cool in it or warm in it, depending on the switch on the back. Now I have the plug for it right here. And we're going to be using the cigarette lighter plug just to test it out and see how well it works. I'm going to plug it in. I'm not sure that this works on both the front and the back, if it does USB and that. So we're going to turn on the AC. There you go. AC is on. And we've got that running. Let's see. Oh, I might want to turn it on. <laughs> there we go. And now that's running as well. And we're also going to plug in that radio in the back there. I just have it on a random AM station. The only one we're able to actually get out here. Um, I know they'll just be talking, so I'm not worried about them... Uh, making too much racket. Let's turn it on. And as you can tell, there's not much on there. <laughs> so let's switch that to an FM station that I know I can receive. So I've got this running. Plugged in there. And I've got that running back there. So we got that turned on. Whoops, I accidentally turned it off. Let's turn that back on again. Oh, I, I'm not very nervous about so I have that. this I running have that, plus it's USBs charging. Doing really well. Really cool. So I'm pretty pleased with it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. Let me turn that down. 
I'm going to go in and I'm going to get the plug for this to actually plug it in here as well. I'm going to see how much we're drawing using the actual AC plug as opposed to the DC plug. All right, so right now, I don't know if you can see it, I'm drawing 49.52 watts. That's from the heating in here and the radio. I have it really low because it's on a radio station. It's going to play music, and I know they're going to give me a copyright strike if I play it too loud. But it is on, and I have about 1.9, 1.6 charging up my devices here, although they're almost fully charged, so it keeps going to zero. But they are almost fully charged. This one actually is, I believe. So I'm going to move you in close to let you see this. Then we're going to plug in the solar panel, which is set up over there already, and uh, we'll give you a look and see how much it can get in and how much it uh, charges. I think you can hear the radio back there. I just want to make sure to grab it before it plays music. Okay, so there you go. You can see the front panel right there. We've got about 45 watts running on the AC plugs, about 1.6 watts on the two uh, plugs down there for the uh, the flashlight and the uh, walkie-talkies that are being charged. So let's plug in the solar panel and see what that can do to charge it back up. Alright, so there's the solar panel set up. This is the uh, Snug Mac 60 watt. I will put links down below to this one as well if you're interested in picking it up. Um, they are a very nice solar panel, very easy to set up, and tons of adapters. We'll show you that when we bring it back over to the uh, table here in a sec with the adapter. And I will explain this big white thing on the back when we go back inside. So here is the unit itself, okay? Now what I'm going to try to do is position this and then zoom you in as we plug in the plug here for the solar. Okay, and I'm going to show you the input on this. See if I can zoom in so you can read it. There we go. Now it's going to start reading an input. Now this is not in optimum sun. This is not facing the sun at all. And I'm getting like 18.5 watts. So remember, too, that any solar panel will be half as efficient as it says. So if it's rated for 60, you'll probably get around 30 to 35, maybe 40 on a really sunny day. So you can see there, it's topping it off. The battery's moving up and down, telling you it's being topped off. These are the adapters for pretty much any solar system you're going to be plugging this into. That plug there on the bottom, we'll plug into these, and we'll pretty much do anything. So, 18.5 watts right now. And again, like I said, I just set that up. I didn't point it towards the sun. The sun is more coming this way right now, and I have it pacing that way. <laughs> so, you can see how it works. But as you can tell here, let me zoom back out. As you can tell, that's a pretty handy little system. And definitely a capable little unit. I mean, that powered a lot of stuff there, especially that um, that little heater cooler unit. I didn't think it was going to be able to do that, but it doesn't really draw that much. So let me bring it inside, and I'll give you the price, and we'll wrap it up, and I'll show you what that big white thing on the back is all about. I mentioned this thing before. I'm going to turn it on here. That is a light. That is a very bright light. You have your emergency blinker and your SOS as well. This could almost be used as a camera light. I mean, it, it kind of looks about the size of one of those, those camera lights. As a matter of fact, I'm going to turn off the lights here. I'm going to check it out really quick. Turn off that. Turn off that one. And see. Yeah, I mean, you could almost use this if it wasn't so heavy as lighting for your camera equipment. Definitely kind of neat. All right, back, back to the video. Inside, topping it back off again. As you can tell, I have it plugged into the wall there. And it's getting about 57.8 watts. So again, with the solar panel, you probably want to put it in a better position than I had mine in. And you'll also get a little less than 60 watts coming in. That's how solar panels work. And that's why they'll be rated on efficiency. You know, if it says 50% efficiency, that means you're going to get half of what's rated. If it says 25%, you'll get a quarter of what it's rated. So all in all, very pleased with the unit. Seems to do very, very well. I would think one of these in a power outage would come very much in handy, especially for you folks that are reliant on medical devices like CPAPs or oxygen generators or anything like that. Definitely a handy little thing. You could probably run a small heater off this. When I say small, I mean small because they draw a lot of power. Um, it was able to power the refrigerator and the heating unit. It does a little bit of both that thing. You can switch it on the back. Let me show you real quick. This is the back of it, and you can choose warm or cool. So it draws about 32 watts in warm mode and about 40 in cool mode. And I had it in warm mode out there. So all in all, not bad. Nice little home unit. Definitely handy for devices, anything like that. 
And you got something with a cigarette plug, you can always just plug it right in there and run it too, just like we did with the fridge. So how much does it cost? Well, normally 350 watt units are very expensive. Snugmax has seemed to corner the market on a little bit more affordable uh, but quality units. So this is going to be $359.99, so $360 at the make time of the making of this video. Um, I will put a link down below where you can pick it up. So you can pick up this. I will also put a link for the panels. These guys here. I know you probably can't see it all on the camera. So if you're interested in checking out their panels too, their panels are very nice, very easy to set up. Tons of adapters, so it can plug into any other unit. If you don't, if you have a, one of these already and you're interested in the panel, you can check that out too. So for 260 bucks, you're getting a cool unit. Definitely a neat little system. Um, I'm impressed with it, and I like the pure sine wave inverters they're putting in these, so you can run more sensitive electronic devices. You could probably run ham radios and stuff off this. You saw the radio worked fine out there. Uh, that was one of the reasons I wanted to test it. We don't really get very good AM radio. That would have been an awesome test. We have one station that cut its power in half at the beginning of last year, so we don't really get it anymore on AM. But that would have been a really good test, but you see very well... It worked very well picking up the local stations there in uh, FM. So, I will put a link down below for this, and I will put a link down below if you're interested in the panel. You can check them both out. Like I said, 260 bucks. that's not bad for a backup power unit, and even if that's too much. Again, like we started in the video, the Snug Max Vickers 200 is definitely a good little unit. A little bit smaller, but definitely a neat little unit. And it's around 150 I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not positive. Um, so, you can check them out. So I will put these two links down below. This one will be first, that one will be second. And I will put a link to my uh, Amazon affiliate store as well if you're interested in checking that out. If there's nothing in the store you like, just click the link and shop as you normally would. Don't forget to check out our preparewithiridium.com link. That is our Food for Patriots link. They have food in stock. They are shipping it out. You can pick up stuff. It's set and forget type stuff. 25 year shelf life. Comes in a nice plastic uh, container. You stick it in a closet and you've got food for emergencies. We have $100 off right now special on the four-week emergency kit. So don't forget to check that out. And don't forget to check out Thrive Life Link as well. If you're interested in getting started and getting some freeze-dried food as a delivery customer, definitely the place to go. Anyway, folks, I thank you for watching. Stay safe and stay prepared.